Tonight, a presidential tweet sparks outrage from both sides of the aisle. What President Trump said about delaying the November election. And the past forward for the economy is extraordinarily uncertain. Uncovering more about the economy's deep nose dive. The latest on America's record setting decline in GDP. Plus, Congressman John Lewis's final send off as he's laid to rest in Atlanta. All this and more tonight on Fake Nation. Tweet from the president sets off a political firestorm. I'm Jenna Browder. Welcome to Faith Nation. I'm John Jessup. President Trump is no stranger to firing off controversial tweets. Today, he did just that, wading into a fight over presidential power. In a warning about mail in ballots, the president questioned if the November presidential election should be delayed. CBN national security correspondent Eric Phillips joins us with the story. Eric, the Constitution is pretty clear on this topic. Yeah, well, the Constitution is very clear, Jenna. And the fact of the matter is the president cannot change the date of the election. That power rests with Congress. And as of right now, there is no appetite on either side to do so. It all began with this from the president via Twitter. With universal mail-in voting, not absentee voting, which is good, 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent election in history. It will be a great embarrassment to the USA. Delay the election until people can properly and safely vote. It seemed to fulfill a prediction made months ago by presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. Mark my words, Biden said. I think he is going to try to kick back the election somehow, come up with some rationale why it can't be held. Many called into question the timing as it came shortly after the release of record low economic numbers. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo grilled about it on Capitol Hill. The Department of Justice, others will, will make that legal determination. In recent months, experts have debated the security of mail-in ballots, some pointing to the challenges experienced with this year's New York primary, where many voters opted to mail-in ballots because of COVID-19. Nothing went wrong at the state. A switch from almost no absentee ballots to approximately 50% absentee ballots in with two months notice. Uh, really strains the system. Election experts on both the right and left agree that voting by mail is the system that, the method of voting that's most susceptible to fraud. The other surprise about today's tweet is what the president said as recently as April. I never even thought of changing the date of the election. Why would I do that? Top Democratic VP contender Senator Kamala Harris tweeting, Donald Trump is terrified. He knows he is going to lose to Joe Biden. It will require every single one of us to make that happen. We will see you at the ballot box on November 3rd, Donald Trump. And I can tell you that Democrats have pushed for there to be billions of dollars included in the next coronavirus relief bill dedicated to election security. But so far, Trump and Republicans have resisted that, that battle ongoing on Capitol Hill right now, John and Jenna. All right. Thank you, Eric. Well, back in mid-March, as lockdowns started to take effect, Hans von Spakovsky, an authority on civil rights, civil justice, and the First Amendment, wrote about this very situation in a piece called, Can Trump Use the Coronavirus to Delay the 2020 Election? Joining us now, Election Law Reform Initiative and Senior Legal Fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Hans von Spakovsky. Hans, uh, you wrote in that piece for imaginative reporters asking me if President Trump can use the pandemic as an excuse to delay the election. The answer is no. Hans, first off, what was your reaction when you first heard about President Trump's tweet? And secondly, safe to assume the answer is still no? Well, I actually went and looked at his tweet first because people started calling me saying, oh, the president is saying he's going to put off the election. But actually, that's a misinterpretation of his tweet. He was asking whether the election should be put off uh, rather than switching to universal uh, mail-in elections, which is what everybody is uh, talking about. So I don't think he was saying uh, he would order to be put off because I think he understands he can't do that. But he was raising concerns that ought to be raised about this push for all-male elections, which I think is a very bad idea. 
Yeah, go into that a little bit more, why it is so risky. Like, there, a lot of his uh, supporters, the president, obviously not a fan of this mail-in mail -in voting. Well, look, it's not just that uh, mail-in ballots are the ones that are most susceptible to uh, fraud, to, ele uh, to voters being pressured to vote a particular way in their homes. But just look at the most recent elections and look at all the problems with the U.S. Postal Service uh, misdelivering and not delivering absentee ballot. Uh, every primary that's been held, Wisconsin, uh, Maryland, um, uh, New Jersey, District of Columbia, all of them have reported voters saying they did not get the ballots they had requested in the mail or they didn't get them in time to return them uh, so that they could be counted. Not only that, the rejection rate for mail-in ballots is much higher than the rejection rate for people in their polling places. New York is reporting uh, one in five ballots being rejected. Uh, that is an enormous number. That is a disenfranchisement rate that we should not tolerate. Hans, given that uh, the potential for overtaxing the system and the president's right. concerns for election fraud and inaccuracies, should the president be working with Congress to safeguard the upcoming election, given the anticipated record number of mail-in ballots? Well, that's, I think that's the wrong approach. What election officials need to be doing is trying to ensure that as many polling places are open to vote in person, but using all the same safety protocols we're using when we go to the grocery store or, or, or our pharmacies. Look, the CDC just released guidelines on how to safely do in-person voting with all those kind of safety protocols in place. Uh, the state's already got over $400 million in the first COVID-19 bill, the CARE Act, to use for any extra costs that they would encounter uh, in putting in those kind of safety protocols. Uh, yeah, some more people may um, vote by absentee ballot, but the vast majority of, of us should be able to vote in person where we know we can hand in our ballot and it won't get misdelivered in the mail. All right, Hans von Spakovsky with the Heritage Foundation. Hans, thanks for being with us today. Sure. Thanks for having me. Tonight, we have a clearer picture of the heavy toll the coronavirus lockdowns took on the economy in the second quarter. New government numbers show the economy contracted by a record 32.9 percent from April through June. That is by far the worst on record for a single quarter. And the damage isn't over yet, as another 1.4 million Americans filed new jobless claims in the last week. Nearly 830,000 self-employed or gig economy workers also applied for government help. And here with us now is Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate.com. Greg, good to have you. Thank you for joining us this evening. So this was the worst three-month uh, contraction on record. What do you make of that? Uh, yeah, Jen, I mean, the worst and by a wide margin. It really wasn't even close. I mean, this is an economy that unfortunately continues to set records for all the wrong reasons. Uh, now, the economy shrinking at an annualized rate of almost 33 percent. Now, to put that in context, uh, the previous record low, which was all the way back in the 50s, was just 10 percent. So we you know, more than tripled that this, this one quarter. I must point out, though, that that's an annualized rate. So it's not like the economy is only two-thirds the size now that it was at the end of March. The economy shrunk about 9.5%. Now, if it maintained that pace for an entire year, that would equate to that 32.9% uh, annualized rate that we saw today. So it's a little like the baseball player hits three home runs on opening day, projecting that they maintain that pace the whole season. Greg, can you help us understand this a little bit better? When we discuss a shrinking GDP, gross domestic product, how does that impact, uh, impact what people really worry about? And that's their wallets and their bank and retirement accounts. Well, the, the thing about the GDP, John, is that it's we're looking in the rearview mirror when we get that, right? So we didn't have to wait till today to know that the economy is in horrible shape. Uh, there's 30 million people that are drawing unemployment claims. And so the, the fact is, by the time we get GDP numbers, people have already been feeling the effects, for better or for worse, by the time that number comes out. In this case, uh, the, the economy contracting sharply. That's why we went from the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years to the highest in 90 years in the span of about eight weeks. Uh, that's why half of American households have seen a hit to their incomes. Uh, that's why we've seen such a sharp drop off in consumer spending as people were sheltered in place at home. All of that reflected in that final number that we saw today.
Yeah, Greg, we know there still isn't a deal in sight uh, when it comes to the next phase of coronavirus economic relief, but unemployment, of course, remains very high. What do you think needs to be included? And what do you think of the $600 unemployment benefit and, and the possibility of that being extended? Now, one of the things that we had seen, Jenna, when states were first opening up was a lot of robust activity. There was a lot of pent-up demand, and people had money to spend, so they were spending it. A part of that was stimulus payments. Part of that was that extra $600 a week that uh, unemployed households were using to kind of keep themselves afloat. Well, if that money goes away, that's going to be not only a direct hit to those households, but it's going to have economic fallout as well. One of the reasons that that 32.9% contraction wasn't worse was because of those type of payments. And as I mentioned a moment ago, nearly half of American households have seen a hit to their income from the pandemic, and, and more than 40% of them say... They don't expect it to come back with any time in the next six months. It's going to take at least that long, if not longer. So there's a definite gap, a definite need in order for households to stay afloat financially, uh, to be able to continue to spend and, and support the economy and the economic recovery. And it's not just those that are unemployed. There's a lot of people working. They're just working less. They've taken a pay cut or they can't run their business uh, per their usual routine. All right, Greg McBride with thebankrate.com. Thank you for joining us. Great insights. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Well, an emotional homegoing service today to celebrate the life and legacy of civil rights legend Congressman John Lewis. Family, friends, and co laborers in the civil rights movement filled Atlanta's historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, spiritual home of John Robert Lewis. America's Freedom Church. If I can help somebody. For a final farewell to the man dubbed the conscience of Congress. To John Miles, to the entire Lewis family, thank you for sharing John Lewis with us. An ordained Baptist minister who practiced preaching to chickens as a young boy honored today by three former presidents as a peaceful soldier of redemptive suffering. And I'm so grateful that he stayed true to form. He's gone up yonder and left us with marching orders. We live in a better and nobler country today because of John Lewis and his abiding faith in the power of God. When we do form a more perfect union, whether it's Years from now or decades, John Lewis will be a founding father of that fuller, fairer, better America. John Lewis was love. Good night, sweet prince. And moving tribute, John. Well, businessman and former presidential candidate Herman Cain has died after battling the coronavirus. According to a post on his website, his family and uh, said doctors were hopeful just five days ago he'd recover from the disease. But his website now says Cain is, quote, entering the presence of the savior he's served, preparing for his reward. Cain, the former CEO of Godfather's Pizza, was 74 years old. Coming up, Congress takes note of the case of a missing Chinese pastor. We explain when Faith Nation returns. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible, all in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news, exclusive stories and programs. Incredible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN News Watch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Yes, right on time. 
from Superbook. Pepper's Pizza Palace is donating pizza for everyone today. Wait, 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 wait. I have big plans today. Trust in God even when times are tough. He has a plan for your life. Hey, we're going to be late for the grand opening. My parents want me to help with this outreach thing, feeding the community. What am I supposed to do here? Superbook! Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook The Birth of Moses, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Pharaoh ordered all newborn Hebrew boys thrown into the Nile River, and I have a three-month-old brother. <gasps> the Birth of Moses. Yours for a gift of only $25. What will you do the next time the soldiers come? I do not know, but I trust God has a plan for all of us. Superbook Club members free streaming for seasons one, two, and three is now available. Welcome back to Faith Nation. Well, House members and their Capitol Hill staff are now required to wear a face mask. Speaker, uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi making that announcement after Congressman Louis Gohmert testified, uh, tested, excuse me, positive for COVID-19 Wednesday. Meanwhile, around the country, virus hotspots are popping up in at least 30 states. We are the global hotspot, and we have mismanaged this virus in a way that I think much of the world uh, simply can't believe. Some states are still facing record-setting cases and hospitalizations. In Florida, the highest death rate yet coming today, with 252 deaths in just 24 hours. On Wednesday, California, North Carolina, Idaho, Texas, and South Carolina all saw record-high deaths. The nation has now surpassed the 151,000 killed by the virus. One bright spot, though, week-to-week -week numbers of confirmed cases are falling for the first time since June. Turning overseas, the case of a missing Chinese bishop imprisoned by China's communist government for decades now has the attention of Congress. That coming as fears of his death grow by the day. Dale Hurd has the story. Bishop James Xu Jimin has spent 40 years of his life in prison for refusing to bow to the Chinese Communist government. Now 88 years old and not seen for many years, there's growing fear that he's dead, and Congress wants answers. President Xi Jinping, where is Bishop Xu and what have you done to him? Congressman Chris Smith recounted meeting Bishop Xu many years ago and said his case is emblematic of the millions of Christians suffering for their faith in China. Bishop Xu told my delegation after celebrating Mass in a tiny apartment that he prayed for his persecutors. And he especially prayed for the cruel and misguided leadership of the Chinese Communist Party. In 2018, the Vatican tried to make a deal with the Chinese government to maintain some independence for the Chinese Catholic Church. Most observers call that effort a disaster. The two sides will meet again in one month, and there were reports this week that China has already hacked Vatican computers. He isn't simply a victim of persecution. Religious freedom advocate Nina Shea told the House Committee the Vatican's trust of China has been naive and inexplicable. Cardinal Sen of Hong Kong said that the Vatican's silence in the agreement of 2018 on the rights of the faithful underground uh, would allow China to succeed in eliminating the underground church with the help of the Vatican. The Chinese government is now demanding the appointment of a new bishop to replace Bishop Xu, one who belongs to the state church and who most Catholics view as a traitor who has left the faith. Dale Hurd, CBN News. All right, thank you, Dale. Healing America's racial divide. Up next, meet two men united despite a shared past that should have torn them apart. When I came to Regent University, it's like the world opened up. I felt like I needed to advance my career and go back to school. Regent was a perfect fit for me. The Regent professors are world class. You are equipped. The focus of the faculty is on each individual student, whether it's online or in person. You become a part of Regent's family. You carry with you not just the content and the knowledge, but the confidence to understand that we can be significant in the world. Regent University. Follow your path.
Nigerian Christians are Christians being Christians in Iran are routinely arrested Nepali because Christians of their continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News, Saturday at 5 p.m. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. Welcome back. As the nation wrestles with racial issues and political polarization, it feels like America is more divided than ever. It was also divided back in 1963 when Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. In it, he envisioned, quote, the sons of former slaves sitting with sons of former slave owners. As Paul Strand reports, today that is a reality for two best friends with a story short, uh, nothing short of miraculous. The Lord spoke separately to Will Ford and Matt Lockett to go to the Lincoln Memorial the same day. There at a prayer meeting, they met right where Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech. Sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. They became fast friends. Doing life together, praying together, you know, great friendship. I love this man like my own brother. Now they speak about racial healing, like in the seven-part retreat from cmax.tv, Seven Days to Change. Always nearby is this kettle, which Will's enslaved ancestors prayed under, so their sometimes violent slave masters wouldn't hear those prayers and beat them. But several years ago, Matt and Will's relationship took a blow when they found out both their past and that kettle intertwined. They learned Matt's ancestors owned Will's ancestors. My friend, his family is the family that owned our family. I've been listening to the story of the slaves who prayed under the kettle for years. Then all of a sudden I found out that I had a connection to that actual story and it was to that of the slave owner. That made it very personal for me. I had to go to a deeper level of forgiveness because now I had a face connected to these stories of slaves being beat or, and why we had to have secret prayer meetings. And it was hard because all of the pain of, of a history and the pain of a community that where that pain is endured, it had a face and it had a name and it was a face that I loved. Yeah, it was a little bit of a struggle uh, for, for several months and uh, I'm glad we hashed it out. They believe the nation can now hash it out. We can definitely rise above racism in America. The whole nation is in a learning moment right now. Through this retreat, we're gonna hit on all these different touch points where people have been dehumanized made less than and, uh, and hit on this thing. Just like Will and Matt did in fellowship and at home. It started in a prayer meeting and we took it into our living rooms. Because this is the place where change starts. It starts with us right in this level. But people will need to get up and act. It's going to take us going beyond our bubbles, going beyond our comfort zones and finding one another. We need the white community to make an effort to get past our comfort zones and, and engage and connect with other people of color. Matt prays people won't be dismissive. I think there's a common sentiment that, hey, I wasn't there, you weren't there, get over it. And I want to encourage us that there is a, a dismissive attitude that we need to address in the church, yeah. that we dare not dismiss the pain that has historical roots that has endured to this day. Will likes to say it's going to take a united church to heal a divided nation. We need to connect with the parts of the body that need healing that need help right now. It affects all of us spiritually because when one part of the body is hurt, all of us are hurt. 
we have this foundation of believing in redemption. Mm -hmm. And so as the culture is in this tug of war over who did what and who's right and who's wrong, we're actually in a position to step in and say, you know what, there's a thing called repentance and there's a thing called forgiveness. And the mighty love that forgives. When you think that Jesus loved us so much that he'd rather die than spend eternity without us. <laughs> and you think, okay, well, what kind of love is that? that? That brings worth, that brings dignity, that brings value to every single person. And if we can introduce that into the culture, oh, the work of God, I think, uh, could explode in a powerful way right now like we've never known. Maybe we'll get a great awakening. They hope people who gather and go through this seven days to change retreat together will come to have relationships like Will and Matt's, tested, but a prophetic fulfillment of what Martin Luther King dreamed of in the exact spot where God brought Matt and Will together. There is this table of brotherhood Dr. King talked about, sons of former slaves sitting with a son of former slave owners, and listen, we're here to tell America right now there's still room at the table. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis. But why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public school. The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. Finally tonight, NASA is heading to Mars. This morning, the space agency launched the most sophisticated Mars rover ever built. That's right. It's called the Perseverance and appropriately named since we'll have to wait seven months for the rover to finally make it to the red planet. Once there, it'll use onboard cameras, microphones, drills, and lasers to gather samples, looking for signs of life on Mars and gaining knowledge that could help pave the way for the arrival of astronauts as early as the 2030s. Pretty neat. All right, we will leave it for there this evening. Have a great night, everybody. Hope to see you again tomorrow.